Mm. Well, to start today's lecture, first of all, I would like to, to say that for all who asked me for uh, exam problems, uh, I will send them. Uh, I haven't sent them yet, but I will send them during this weekend. Uh, today's lecture is, um, well, the next lecture will be the, the last in this course. So this is the previous by the last. Well, okay. Uh, I recall that last time we started to prove uh, theorem due to Likorish and Humphreys uh, in, in its final form, it is due to Humphreys that the mapping class group, uh, sorry, do you see my screen? Do, do you see? Can everybody? Yeah. Can any bit say okay? Uh, so, um, in final form, the formulation is as follows: the mapping class group of uh, a closed genus G surface is generated by the two G plus one then twists uh, about uh, uh, these uh, two G plus one uh, simple closed curves uh, shown in this picture. And uh, this is a uh, formulation due to Humphreys. Uh, a slightly weaker formulation was due to, to Likorish. He said that uh, 3G minus one, then twists uh, which are blue or violet on this picture, uh, that they are enough to generate the mapping class group. And uh, last time, we show we have shown that Humphreys theorem follows from Likorish one, and even from a even weaker statement, uh, we can say that um, these blue, violet, and red then twists generate the whole mapping class group. And last time I have shown you that. All these dent twists, all dent twists in this figure, can be expressed through dent twists in that figure. So, if we have, if we prove that these dent twists generate uh, the whole mapping class group, we will immediately obtain this Humphreys theorem. Okay. So, our goal for today, for for, for the first uh, part of the lecture today is to prove that these dent twists ab about curves M1, et cetera, Mg, M2 prime, et cetera, Mg minus one prime. Uh, so there are G plus G minus two, G, G curves Mi's, G minus two curves Mi primes, uh, plus G curves Ai's, and G minus one curves CIs. Totally, we have four G minus three curves. Uh, our goal is to prove that these four G minus three dent twists generate the whole mapping class group. Uh, well, uh, uh, and this. Uh, proof uh, will uh, use all things which we uh, introduced uh, last time and uh, the, the lecture before the last, uh, namely the action of the mapping class group on the curve complex. More precisely, we will use the action, the most convenient way is to use the action on the modified uh, Non-separating curve graph. I I I, I will remind uh, recall what what it is, uh, and uh, also we will use uh, these Birman and uh, Birman Lobotsky McCarthy uh, exact sequences. So they all will work today. Okay, let us start from. Well, let us start from a general situation. Suppose that a group, uh, now I mean a group, a discrete group, a group without topology. So suppose that some group acts on a graph. 
uh, and usually it is useful when a group acts on a connected graph. And the most, the simplest case is when suppose that the action, uh, both graph and group uh, can be infinite. So, uh, and even locally infinite. So it is possible that from a vertex of a graph, there are infinitely many edges and, uh, and so on. Uh, so now actually a graph, uh, uh, is a graph in topological sense. So more precisely, it can be a multigraph. So it's just one dimensional cell complex. So we, it may have uh, multiple edges, loops and, and so on. And, uh, but uh, action on a graph means that it acts on vertices and it acts on edges. So it acts by graph automorphisms. And so suppose additionally that G acts transitively on vertices of on vertices of gamma okay uh, if uh, th this means that for any two vertices uh, for any uh, two vertices uh, we may, there is an element of G which takes the first vertex to the second one. Now, now consider how an, an element of G acts. Suppose we have, let us choose some, uh, since the group acts on vertices transitively, all vertices uh, mm, are, are equivalent, all, all, all vertices are, uh, have the same, uh, the graph have the same structure to all vertices. So let us choose any of them. Uh, it is convenient to cho choose some starting vertex, V0. So here is our graph gamma. And consider any element of group G. Then it acts on this V0 and it sends this V0 to one of the vertices. So say this is this one is G V0. Okay, our and since our graph is connected by our assumption, there is a path along edges from V0 to G V0. Uh, this path can be not unique. I don't want to say anything about uh, its uniqueness, but it exists. Okay. Now, now let us enumerate these vertices along this path. So this is V1, V2, etc., and some VK equals JV0. So we have K edges uh, in, in our path and K plus one vertices. Now, look, I would like to write G as a product of elements with, uh, with uh, some properties. So since the group acts transitively on, on mm, since the group acts transitively on vertices, there is an element G1 in the group G such that G1, Mm. such that G1 say, takes V0 to V1. Uh, okay, mm. then there is an element G2 such that it takes V1 to V2 and so on. Uh, there is an element GK such that it takes the K minus ones, uh, K minus first vertex to the K vertex of our path. So we can write G and of, well, of course it is not 
necessarily true that g is not necessarily equal to um, the product. But at least both of these elements take both these elements take v0 to vk. This means that if we write the following element gk g1 and uh, uh, then g minus 1 then this element takes v0 again to v0 hence it be belongs to the stabilizer of oh sorry what what I, this this element let, let it be h it belongs to the stabilizer of v0 well so what we see we see that if we write uh, gh then it is equal to this element and it is more convenient to me to write it as follows so look we we have managed to write an element g in the following uh, in the following form uh, we have here an element in a, in the stabilizer of the prechosen vertex v0 then we have an element g1 which takes v0 to v1 then we have an element g2 and etc an element gk and actually we could choose any elements g1 gk uh, which take this uh, mm, uh, so we, we need only one element which takes v0 to v1 we need only one element which takes v1 to v2 and uh, if so the the claim which i would like to to say to say is that if for each edge for each edge e we have chosen uh, for for uh, let us formulate it as follows suppose that for each well oriented uh, edge e in the graph we have chosen an element ge that takes the starting vertex um, uh, of this uh, edge to, to, to the end of this edge. Suppose that we have chosen such edge for each uh, uh, such element for each edge. Then, then uh, the group G is generated by all elements GE and by the stabilizer of the vertex V0. Well, so we have actually we have already proved this claim. This this is claim one. Uh, now this claim will become even better. But at the, at the moment we have proved this that indeed we we take arbitrary element. We write down elements corresponding to edges in this path, and we add some element in the stabilizer and we succeeded to under, uh, to obtain the required element g so we have this claim that any element of g can be written in in this form can be uh, expressed through this uh, pre-chosen elements ge 
and through elements of the stabilizer. This is a good claim, but this is not enough and we can improve this claim. Ne next claim, in fact, is as follows. Let us consider only those edges, only those edges, which contain V0 as the endpoint. So only edges from V0. And let us choose elements GE only for such edges. So these uh these uh, elements again take the zero to the endpoints of the corresponding elements. Then claim two is that these edges are enough. We do not need to take all edges. We need to take only edges from the zero. So G is generated by... Um, these, uh, these elements, uh, these pre-chosen elements for edges from V0 and by the stabilizer of the vertex V0. Well, okay, uh, let us understand how claim two follows from claim one. Uh, let us uh, mm, well. Uh, let us proceed by induction. Uh, so proof of claim two. Uh, so we need uh, we need to prove that any element G in the group G can be expressed through mm, through these but uh, these elements corresponding to edges uh, from v0 and through elements of and elements of the stabilizer okay well let us prove but any if we take any element of G of the group, then it takes V0 to some vertex VK. So let, let, uh, let, let us uh, consider uh, this picture once more. So um, we, we need to prove this for any. Uh, element, but let us prove this claim, this claim that any element can be expressed uh, by the induction on K. For each element, we can consider how long is the, say the shortest path from V0 to, to G V0, and it has some length k, and we prove our induction by uh, uh, the, the claim by the induction of on k. Uh, note that the base of induction for k equals k equals zero is obvious. If uh, the an element g takes v zero to itself, then uh, uh, it lies in the stabilizer, but k equals one is already proved also. Indeed, uh, well, <laughs> in the case of uh, g equal one, we need only an edge going from outgoing from v0 and we have our element g1 for this. Uh, Edge. So, so the proof, the, the above proof, uh, works for, um, works for, uh, in the case of k equal one. Now, let us uh, prove. Uh, so, let suppose 
that k is greater than or equal to two and proof uh, the induction step from k minus one to k. So we assume our claim for k minus one and we would like to prove um, it's for k. Okay, uh, well, uh, since uh, Uh, we would like to, since we have our, so let us consider the k minus first vertex v k minus one. And since uh, we have already, uh, we assume uh, our claim for k minus one, we know that v k minus one is some j prime of v zero, where g prime, uh, can be expressed from uh, uh, not from can be expressed through this uh, elements corresponding to edges from V zero and the stabilizer and the elements of stabilizer of V0. So this is our inductive assumption. Uh, now look, we need to, to, to pass from here to here, from VK minus one to, v, to VK, we need to go along some edge epsilon. But, uh, let us consider the edge G prime inverse of epsilon. G prime inverse takes the vertex VK minus one to the vertex V zero. So G prime inverse of epsilon is an edge outgoing from V zero. So it is one of the edges ES. So among our elements, G E one, G E S, uh, there exists, there exists uh, and uh, so, so, so among them there is an element G E S. So we see that uh, G E S takes, V zero to the end point of this H E S. But now if we apply G prime, if we conjugate this element by G prime, then we arrive to an element which, which takes V K minus one to V K. So uh, this means that if we take G prime minus one G E S G G prime, then it takes V K minus one to V K. So uh, the element G prime G E S takes V zero to V K. And again, this means that G equals to G prime G E S and H H inverse for some H in the stabilizer. Uh, uh, there is no need for this inverse just to uh, fit our previous notation. Okay, and so G prime can be written from the required elements by the inductive assumption. This is one of our given elements. And this one lies in the stabilizer. So this finishes the proof. We have written our G in the required form. This claim is useful in itself. So mm, sometimes uh, uh, 
uh, it is useful enough. The, the, the matter is that to generate G now, we need to look only on the neighborhood of V0. We do not need to look on the whole graph, which can be complicated and uh, it can be uh, difficult to look uh, for, uh, on the whole graph, but we need to look only on this neighborhood of V0. So this claim is very useful in itself, but there is one situation when this claim is can be made even better. So mm, this is as follows. Suppose that G acts transitively not only on the edge on the vertices of the graph but also on the edges uh, of the graph uh, both so it it acts transitively both on the vertices of gamma and for simplicity let us uh, say that it it acts uh, there are two possibilities for for a transitive action on edges of gamma. Uh, it is possible that it acts transitively on non-oriented edges, and it is possible that it acts transitively on oriented edges. For simplicity, let us consider oriented edges here, though for non-oriented, this also works. So suppose that G acts transitively both on the vertices of gamma and on the oriented edges of gamma. Then mm, the claim is as follows. Then G is generated by the stabilizer. And again, again, gamma is connected. As before, uh, gamma. So then G is generated by the stabilizer of one vertex V0 and by a single element. We need to take only one element. Uh, well, uh, let it be G0 that takes. V zero to one of the to one of the vertices adjacent to it. Uh, maybe it is adjacent is not a good uh, word here. To one of the uh, to one of the neighbor vertices. So we need, we do not need to choose an element G E S for each edge from outgoing from V0. It is enough to choose it only for one such edge. So if we have a vertex V0, a, its neighbor v1 and we choose any element g0 that takes v0 to v1 then g is generated by the stabilizer actually yes and here it is important that any so we can take any one g0 with this property if we take the stabilizer and a and choose any element that takes v0 to a neighbor vertex v1 then this element is g0 and the stabilizer generate the whole group why uh, it is very easy the matter is that our group acts transitively on all edges 
on all edges. So let this one, this edge be E0 and other are E1, E2, all edges are outgoing from V0. But G acts transitively, transitively on these oriented, oriented edges. But if an element of G takes E0, say to E1, then this element belongs to the stabilizer. It, it, if it takes this oriented edge to one of those oriented edges, then it necessarily takes V0 to itself. So this means that stabilizer of V0 acts transitively on edges outgoing from, from V0. And this easily implies that, well, so, so for each such edge, there exists an element HI in the stabilizer of V0, such that HI takes a E0 to e, EI. Okay, then for an element GEI, which takes V0 to the endpoint of EI, we can choose uh, an element. Uh, okay, we need to take G0 and we need to conjugate it by HI. Uh, let us understand in which. Uh, in which order HI minus prime takes VI to V1, then G0 takes V0 to V1. Or actually, it, there is no need to make this conjugation, just, just uh, this element is completely enough. This, this, this element takes V0 to VI. Uh, so, so all these elements G, E, I can be chosen so that they are written from elements of the stabilizer and this single element G0. And now the, the, this claim follows from the above claim too. And this is the most convenient formulation. So uh, it reduces the problem of generating G to the problem of generating the stabilizer. Uh, well, and, and uh, additionally, we need to take only one element. Well, now uh, let us apply this uh, technique to uh, the case of, um, to the case of uh, the mapping class group. Uh, well, so we have a genus G surface. Well, I always uh, assume that G is greater than or equal to one uh, because if a G is zero, then the mapping class group is trivial and uh, there is nothing interesting. Uh, okay, so let us consider the following graph. The graph will be a modified non-separating complex. I recall that this is a graph, the graph whose vertices are isotopy classes of essential simple closed curves on SG and the isotopy classes of alpha and beta. Uh, I, mm, for the sake of simplicity, I denote isotopy classes by the same letters as the curves themselves. Uh, alpha and beta are mm, connected by an edge.
if and only if the intersection geometric intersection number is one. So we have this you in usual curve complex they are connected by an edge if and only if the geometric intersection number is zero. But uh, now for us it is can, more convenient to consider this graph where uh, the geometric intersection number is one. And... Oh, so, 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 yes, of course, non separating. Thank you very much. Non separating simple closed curves. Yes. Actually, if we add separating simple closed curves, then a separating simple closed curve cannot have ge a geometric intersection number one with any other curve. So separating curves would be just is isolated points. And of course, we do not want to consider them. I recall that I gave it as an exercise. We have proved that the usual uh, curve complex is connected. And I have given uh, as an exercise that this graph is also connected. Uh, I will not prove it now, so I hope that you can do this exercise yourself. Uh, it is not hard to uh, prove it from the uh, connectedness of usual curve complex. Uh, and now why this modified graph is more convenient than the usual? Why, why geometric index one? is better than geometric index two. The matter is uh, the following, that look, if two simple closed curves have geometric intersection index one, then, and then, Mm. Well, then it is a standard uh, fact that we have used several, uh, that we have already used several times that uh, the mapping class group acts transitively on all such pairs. and even on, on, on all such ordered pairs. So we are exactly in the situation of the, uh, of the lemma above that mapping class group acts transitively on oriented edges and hence on vertices also edges and vertices of this graph. Well, uh, I recall that the proof, uh, I, I will not uh, go through exact proof. Now we have already discussed this situation, but uh, the proof is approximately that we consider this, uh, first of all, by Alexander's method, we know that uh, if, uh, uh, no, so sorry, we know, uh, uh, if we have, um, no, uh, we do not need Alexander's method, just if we have these uh, two curves, uh, then, uh, 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 then the regular neighborhood of the uh, union is a disk and the complement to this, oh, is sorry, not disk, is a torus with one boundary component. And the complement is the uh, G minus one uh, mm, uh, of the surface of genus G minus one with one boundary. Uh, 
component. And from classification of these surfaces, we know that, uh, well, <laughs> any two of them are, uh, there is only one. After homeomorphism, there is only one surface on Tino G minus one with one boundary component. So if we have two such pictures, then we can arrange a homeomorphism of the then we can arrange a homeomorphism on, of one one puncture torus to the to another and then we can extend this homeomorphism along uh, to to that surfaces since the these surfaces are homeomorphic okay mm -hmm. so 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 we can always construct a homeomorphism that takes takes any two such prescribed uh, uh, curves to any other two. For, uh, for usual uh, curve complex, this is not true. Uh, the matter is that if two simple closed curves have uh, intersection index one, then there can be several possibilities. There are There is a possibility that they're situated like that, that they do not separate the surface to, together, but there is, situation that these curves are homologous, then they separate the surface and uh, there are, th then we need to, to look on the genera of the parts uh, and they can be different. We still have finite the many orbits of edges and hence more or less the same technique can be applied, but it becomes slightly more difficult. So it is preferable to work with this graph, since here we have this transitiveness. Okay, now, now let us uh, look on, let us look on all these four G minus three curves. My goal is now, now now I'm going to prove that the dead twists about this, uh, these four G minus three curves uh, generate So we are going to prove claim that the then twists about these all these curves generate the whole mapping class group and uh, Uh, and we all, uh, I recall once more that this implies Humphrey's theorem that indeed only two G minus one of these curves are enough. Well, so we will proceed uh, using the approach, which uh, the a general approach, which I discussed above. Uh, so we need to choose a particular vertex of our graph. So we take this graph the group acts transitively. Well, first of all, we proceed by induction on G. By induction on G. Uh, the base of induction is G equals zero when there are no curves and no group. And the group is trivial, so it generates by nothing. So the base of induction is trivial. So now we consider this graph and uh, uh, we would like to choose one particular vertex. And the most convenient vertex is the vertex corresponding to simple closed curve to the simple closed curve M1. So this is our vertex. Well, so what we know, we know that the stabilizer of, oh, sorry, that the whole mapping class group, mapping class group 
is generated by the stabilizer of this. Uh, I, I write mod G just for mod of SG. Uh, by the stabilizer of this curve and a single element which takes M1 to, to one of the neighbors, say to A1. But let us recall that when we have two curves with a single intersection point with, with geometric intersection index one, then we have the following relation. We have a braid relation in the mapping class group for any pair of curves which have a single intersection point, for instance, for M1 and A1. And this easily implies, uh, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, 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 I'm sorry for that. And this easily implies that uh, Uh, well, uh, I claim that this easily implies that uh, TA1, TM1, TA1 of M1 equals A1. Uh, uh, Indeed, uh, uh, why why these uh, these uh, I I say that these two uh, mm, these two formulas are just the same. Uh, well, the, 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 these ones exactly means that. Uh, mm, T A I A one. Uh, okay, oh, oh, uh, look, mm, TA1, TM1, TA1. If we multiply this by the inverse of that, then this is exactly the then twist about mm, the image of the curve M1 under this mapping class. But look on the left-hand side, uh, these two guys are equal to each other with uh, opposite signs, so they we can cancel them. So we see that this equals to T A A A one, and if then twist about separated about simple clock about two simple clock curves are equal to each other, then the curves itself are equal to it, to to each other up to homotopy, and so we obtain the required uh, the required uh, equality. So we choose this particular element. It takes M one to one of the neighbors, namely to A one. So we see that the mapping class group is generated by the stabilizer of M1 and by the element TA1, TM1, TA1. Okay, but this is a wonderful situation. This is a wonderful thing. These elements TA1, TM1 are among our generators. So, to prove that the mapping class group is generated by all these elements, we need only to prove that the stabilizer 
lies in the subgroup generated by all these elements. So any, if we prove that any element of, of the stabilizer can be written through these elements, this element also can be written through these elements. So we obtain that, we would obtain that any element of the mapping class group can be written through these generators. So we have understood that we suffice to prove, we suffice to show that any element of the stabilizer can be mm, expressed through, uh, I, I would uh, say through, through the four G minus three generators, I always mean those particular four, four G uh, minus three generators. I, I just don't want to repeat once more so through, through, the, so through these generators. Okay. Now I would like to make one more step and I want to replace to replace here the stabilizer. In, the, in this claim, I would like to replace the stabilizer of the curve M1 with the stabilizer of the oriented curve M1. This is, this, this group is subgroup of, is the index and two subgroup of this stabilizer. But I, I want to say that if we, right here, this one, then uh, it is also enough to prove the corresponding claim. Why? The matter is that it is not hard to point out one particular element which takes M1 to itself and uh, reverses the orientation of the curve M1. Namely, namely, I, I would like to leave it as an exercise, uh, but I, I will say which element works. Exercise that the element TA1, TM1 squared TA1 takes M1 to itself, reversing its orientation. So the, this stabilizer is generated by that stabilizer and the element TA1, TM1 squared, TA1. This element is expressed through our uh, generators. So it is sufficient uh, to express all elements in, in the stabilizer of the oriented curve M1. Okay. А правда, что гиперэлиптическая инволюция тоже подходит? The hyperelliptic evolution is good since it takes uh, it also takes M1 to itself uh, in reversing its orientation. But uh, there is no obvious way to express the hyperelliptic evolution through our generators. Yes, we, uh, we have written this, but uh, I just don't, don't want to recall. It, it is also possible, but I just, just to, concerning this, for this element, it is just obvious. So I prefer to, uh, hyperleptic involution is also, yeah, also can be used here, yes, indeed. Uh, Yes, thank, thank you for this comment. Actually, hyperlipidic evolution also works. Well, uh, so now we need to work only with this stabilizer. And now we are going to use uh, the Birman Lubotsky McCarthy and Birman exact sequences. Let us write down the corresponding sequences. Uh, 
first of all, if we Birman Lubotsky McCarthy. Oh, yeah. No, I, I will not. Okay. I will write it in full notation. Exact sequence is as follows. Sorry. Sorry, one moment. Олег Карлович, извините, у меня лекция не перезвонила. Uh, so sorry. Uh, well, the Birman Lobotsky McCarthy exact sequence is as follows in this situation. So it allows us to reduce the situation to the pure making class group of genus G surface with. Re removed curve M1. And then uh, there are two Birman exact sequences. Uh, namely, let us, first of all, let us look what we see when after we delete, remove M1. When we remove M1, we obtain two punctures on one, on one side of both uh, sides of M1 yield punctures in the obtained surface. We obtained a genus G minus one surface with two punctures. There is no anymore, we do not have a curve A1, but all other curves preserved on the on the sur surface. So uh, I, I do in the following way, I copy this picture and then I will remove M1. So, so how to remove M1? We need to do the following. We need to remove all these. So we get a genus G minus one surface. And instead of M1, we obtain two punctures, uh, which uh, I denote by M1 plus and M1 minus. Now, now these are not curves, these are just punctures. So after we remove M1, we obtain exactly this situation. Uh, so with some sake, uh, so, so with some of use of notation, I use the same uh, um, symbols for all the other curves on this new surface. And so look, we suffice to prove, we suffice to prove that the twists, the remaining twists, uh, which twists uh, are here? Uh, T A2, T A G, T C1, Dc2, Dc g minus one, uh, Tm2, Tmg, Tm2 prime, Tmg minus one prime, that these remaining twists uh, generate the mapping class group of these mm, two punctured 
surface. I recall that this surface, I can write it here, this surface without a bond is homeomorphic to G minus two, one surface with two punctures. So we suffice to prove this. Indeed, then uh, these twists generate this group, and that kernel is also generate, uh, generated by the twist M1 about one of our uh, curves. So together, we see that. Uh, mm, the required stabilizer is generated by all these uh, all these twists. Uh, actually, uh, it is useful to think through this situation. The situation is not very trivial. The matter is that there is no homomorphism from here to here. This exact sequence doesn't split. So, we cannot say that this one is a subgroup. And if, if it were a subgroup, this, we would say that, okay, these two subgroups together generate this group. So once both are generated by the required elements, then it's okay. But uh, this is not the case. The case is that we only have this sequence, but we can proceed as follows. Suppose we have any element F here, then it goes here to some element, well, F tilde. Then this F tilde can be written through twists. Well, if, if we suppose for a moment that we have proved this claim, uh, that we have proved that these then twists generate this mapping class group, then we would, would say that this F tilde can be written from these dent twists. We have no, there is no morphism, homomorphism here. However, we can consider in this group the dent twists about the same curves. To be honest, these are different elements. We cannot identify them since this group is not. Uh, embedded here, but there are these elements here and they go to the corresponding then twists in this group. Hence, once we have write F tilde through these then twists, okay, say uh, I just for instance, TA1, TM3, and etc. Uh, we, we have it. We may look here for an element F prime which have the same expression. We cannot still claim that F equals F prime, but we know that both of them go here to the same F tilde. This means that F and F prime differ by an element of the kernel and an element of the kernel is generated by the dent twists about M1. So, F is written through F prime and TM1, and totally it is written through the desired generators. So we arrive to this conclusion that we suffice to prove that uh, these twists generate this mapping class group with of two punctured surface. Now, Beerman exact sequences should be used. So once more, I would like to have here this picture. Uh, okay, we have uh, we have two punctures, so we we need to use uh, Beerman exact sequence twice. Uh, let us uh, denote by S prime. So this, this surface is S without, let S be the initial surface. This one is S without M1. 
So uh, I would like to denote by S prime uh, the surface obtained from S from this surface with two punctures by forgetting the puncture M M one minus. So S S prime, th this surface is genus G minus one surface with two punctures. S prime is genus G minus one surface with one puncture. Uh, we forget about puncture M1 minus and only puncture M1 plus resumes. And the next step would be the surface S2 primes, which is just the closed surface of genus G minus one. We now here we forget both punctures. So we have two Biermann sequences, one relating the surfaces this surface with that surface and the second relating this surface with those surfaces. We have, uh, let us write down these sequences. Well, the first one is as follows. Uh, mm. Here, I would like to write down the following. Uh, this means, this means uh, the following, that in the surface S prime, we forget the puncture M1 minus. So this is not a puncture anymore, but it is a marked point and we choose it for the base point, as usually in the Biermann exact sequence. So we have this push map to the pure mapping class group. Uh, of the original surface with two punctures and the result is the surface S prime. And the second exact sequence is similar. Now if I get about a one plus and it also becomes just a marked point. Here we have push uh, to the pure mapping class group of S prime. And here we have, okay, again, pure mapping class group, but we have no punctures, so we can, uh, in fact, even here we can delete this P since if we have only one puncture or no punctures, then there is uh, no difference between usual mapping class group and pure mapping class group. Only, only in this situation, it is important that we do not allow to, uh, to be mute punctures, but here we also ho have this pure mapping class group. So we, we are interested exactly in, in this group. And so, so here- <laughs> Well, Ilya. ah, ah, no, 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 prime with without M1 minus is exactly S without the curve M1. This, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. exactly this curve, the, this curve. So these are two, these are uh, two sequences. And what we know by the induction hypothesis, we know that if we forget about both punctures, forget for a moment by, by from this puncture, then these are okay. Then M, M2 prime becomes the same as C1, M2 also becomes the same as C1. And this is exactly the set of curves for the uh, uh, for the surface of genus of uh, with one with genus. Uh, one less. So, and by inductive assumption, we know that this group, this one is closed surface. So we, we know that it is generated 
by I will I, I would like to write by the required elements. I, I don't want to uh, uh, route them or, or, or write them on, once more. But this one is generated by the required elements the, by the then twists about shown curves. So we again use the same trick that again these two sequences do not split, but we, we can again take an element here and look on its image here and write uh, uh, write it as uh, a product of some dent twists like that. Then we'll write dent twists about the same curves here. And then the difference between the original element and our expression lies in this kernel. But now kernel is more difficult than in this birman lebotsky mccarthy exact sequence. So, but still look, we know that this one is generated by the required twists. So our only goal is to prove that the image of this push map is generated by the required twists. And then we would obtain that this mapping class group is generated by the required twists. And then we need to prove that the image of this push map is generated by the required twists. So we arrive to the following conclusion that we suffice to show that the images of the push maps of this one and that one are generated. Uh, it is not uh, good to say that uh, the images are generated. Uh, it is uh, better, better, better to say that, uh, that any element in the images of these push maps can be expressed through the required, uh, th through the desired dent twists. So we need only to look on these two push maps and to say that the image of, e of either of them is generated by these, the, particular dent twists. And then the, uh, the, the theorem will follow. So I think now it is a reasonable time to make a 10 minute break. And uh, after that, we will finish the proof. Well, let's... Uh, continue our lecture. Uh, do you hear me? Well, um, now, uh, actually, we, so we need to prove um, these statements about these two push maps. Actually, these are these two <clears throat> these two mm, 
these two assertions are completely similar to each other. So I will prove the first one. And the second is completely similar. It, it is just symmetric. Uh, there is one non-symmetric thing that when we forget about puncture M1 plus, then we already do not have a puncture M1 minus, but this changed nothing. Uh, so uh, in, fa in fact, the proof which, I'll, which I will say for forgetting the puncture M1 minus will work without any change just by symmetric argument. So let us look on this. Well, first of all, we know which elements generate the fundamental group. For, for the fundamental group, uh, we know very well how its generators look like. And uh, well, so we now at the moment we have puncture here and we have base point here. And uh, how do generators of the fundamental group look like? The, for, the, for each handle, there are two generators and we can choose them, them as follows. The, the first generator is this loop which is alpha k. And the second generator is that loop, which is beta k. And if we take such generators for all, for all, uh, how, how to say, for all handles, then, uh, Totally, they are, uh, they generate the whole fundamental group. And, oh, so, so sorry, 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 here is S prime. And in fact, the only difference uh, between the case of forgetting the first puncture and the second puncture is the fact that when we have this puncture, then the fundamental group is free with, with, the, with these two G generators. When, but when we forget about the second puncture, then we have a symmetric picture and we already do not have additional puncture. Then the fundamental group is not free, but it is uh, as usually uh, the fundamental group of a closed surface is free group. Uh, is, the, is the quotient of the free group with uh, by one product of, of commutators. Uh, but the only thing we need about this fundamental group that it is generated by these two uh, particular uh, two times G minus one loops. And this is true in both cases. Uh, I note that here we have two times G minus one, since in fact we have uh, G minus one handles. This is the surface of genus G minus one. Well, and now, now let us start, let us start. Yes, and I would like to recall the following, that how the, we have already discussed this, last time, when we have a closed curve, for instance, let us start with this A1, with the first of the case of the curves uh, uh, alpha one, uh, uh, not, not A1, alpha one, uh, the first of these loops. If this loop, can be represented by a simple closed curve, 
then we can write down the element push of this loop. Uh, and this is exactly as follows. We need to take two simple closed curves on two sides of, of this loop. They are homotopic to each other after we forget, after forgetting the puncture, but they are not homotopic before forgetting the, pun the puncture. So here in this uh, group, in this pure mapping class group, these are different curves. Let them be alpha one plus and alpha one minus. And then the, the curve, <clears throat> then push alpha one is exactly T alpha one. It is better to write. Uh, actually, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to take care about science. I don't want to to, to uh, make some effort to think whether it is this element or the inverse of it, since it is completely unimportant for us. But it is su such product of the dent twist and the inverse of it. Uh, it, 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 it actually depends, oh, the, 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 there are some, we, we, I have said that there are some uh, uh, delicate things here, whether we would like to have uh, to do uh, this push to be a homomorphism or we allow it to be a anti-homomorphism. So mm, I don't want to think about these signs. Uh, it, they are not important, but it is important that this element is exactly, okay, this alpha one minus is exactly this M2, but alpha one plus is exactly C1. These are exactly up to homo isotopy. These are two of our curves. So this is T C1, T, M2 minus one. So this element is expressed, can be expressed from our dent twists. So for the first element, we have solved the problem. We need to do this for, for all of these 2G minus one elements. Uh, now for other curves, the situation is somewhat uh, more difficult, namely if we, uh, just uh, write down the corresponding uh, uh, simple closed curve uh, alpha k minus and alpha k plus and the same for beta k's, then I, they are not among our curves. Uh, instead of doing like that, we would like to, we would like to find mapping classes find mapping classes uh, say fj and hj in uh, the mapping class group your mapping class group of the surface, so with two punctures. Uh, we would like to find such mapping classes that they take alpha one to alpha j's and this these take alpha one to beta j's. And then of course, then of course, if we find these elements, then if we have these two curves alpha one plus and alpha one minus for alpha one, then this mapping class will take our, these curves to the corresponding curves for alpha j. So we would obtain that push of alpha j equals to fj tc1 tm2 minus one, fj my inverse. And similarly push beta j is hj tc1 t 
Tm2 minus 1, Hj inverse. So it is sufficient to choose these mapping classes. We would like to choose them so that they are expressed through our required twists. If we manage to do this, so if we manage to write particular elements, which takes alpha one to alpha j and alpha one to beta j, uh, and which are written as products of, of these then twists, then we are done. Then all these push elements will be expressed through these elements fj and hj and through this particular element, which is also a product of the required twists. So this is the only thing we need to do to find this appropriate fj and hj. And now uh, I don't want to uh, to draw these pictures for uh, it, it is uh, it it will take some time and it is better to uh, to make this if you make this yourself I just write down which element take these alphas to betas it is uh, it is not so uh, nice to take. Um, to take alphas uh, uh, alpha one to alpha j, it is better to take them one to another. Uh, 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 so first of all, um, this particular element tm one m two t a two takes alpha one to beta one. So for beta one, we it is enough. Now the following element. Uh, yes, uh, what, what, one one remark. One remark that this uh, this uh, our numeration is as follows. This is a k plus one. This is not a k. The matter is that a is enumerated from two and alphas and betas are enumerated from one. So we have uh, removed one. Uh, handle and because of that we have this shift of the of the numeration so the, I, I now I, I i'm going to give you an exercise and when performing this exercise please be careful about this shift in numeration so first of all we have this one this is first second we have uh, mm, the following element let it be k this particular element takes beta k minus one to beat the k. So first we can take alpha one to beta one, then we can take beta k minus one to beta k for all k. So uh, as a composition, we can take alpha one to any of beta k. And then we can return from beta k to alpha k, namely um, if we apply T a k plus one inverse T m k plus one inverse to beta k, then we obtain alpha k. Actually, look, <laughs> this is all <laughs> the first is partial case of the third. Uh, and okay, these three identities, I hope you can just, just uh, you need to draw some pictures, just it is not hard to apply particular then twist to particular uh, loops. And if you do this, you check these identities. And after that, we see that, okay, any of the, uh, 
for any of the loops beta k and alpha k, we can, it can be obtained from alpha one by applying some product of these dent twists, of these dent twists. And hence, we can write down these push elements as product of these desired dent twists. And after that, using this sequence as we obtain that this group is written, all elements of this group are written from the desired uh, twists. And then we, uh, again, once more using, uh, using this Birman Lebowski McCarthy, we arrive to this stabilizer and the stabilizer is enough. Uh, uh, we are understand this from the action of the curve complex. So this finishes the proof on the generation uh, on the generation of the mapping class group, and we are done with this. Well, just I want to say that um, first, this can be easily just two remarks. Remarks. First. Uh, this presentation for mapping class group can be easily generalized, it can be easily uh, mm, generalized to the cases of surface with punctures and boundary components. And uh, this is against some standard facts. Uh, mm, I, ju I just, I, I don't want to give precise formulations now, but uh, they can be easily found in the literature and uh, the proofs are in the, by, in the same way. And second, uh, more, more difficult uh, claim is that, mm, Unfortunately, I have no time to speak about it, but uh, maybe it is more important that we have already some feeling of how to work with complexes. Uh, exploiting, if we speak about generation, we usually need connectedness of complex only. So we, uh, we used only, we have used only con the connectedness of the complex um, of the modified complex of non-separating curves. Uh, when we are interested in uh, not only, oh, the, the, this, sorry, this is not presentation, these generators, sorry, generators. And the second remark concerns presentation. So actually, when we speak about relations in the mapping class group, we usually need simply connected complex. There are several possibilities to handle this. There are several simply connected co complexes uh, on which uh, the mapping class group uh, acts. Uh, first of all, the complex, the complex of curves also is simply connected uh, when genus is sufficiently large. Uh, and uh, for for torus, we know the pre uh, a presentation since it is SL two Z, and uh, for high genus genera, uh, we, we can do it by the curve complex, or we can apply R complex when we have at least one puncture. Originally, uh, there was approach by Hatcher and Thurston using, using their Hatcher. Thurston complex, which I have uh, already discussed several lectures ago, but mm, uh, I'm, I do not have time to uh, do this, but uh, an explicit presentation, I just would like to mention that an explicit finite presentation for the mapping class group, in this particular Humphreys generators, in the Humphreys generators is known. This presentation was obtained by 
Wine Rip in 1983. And <clears throat> the presentation, uh, I will not write it down, uh, but generally, well, I would like to take this Humphreys Jr. Okay. Well, the, actually, the generator, uh, the presentation is as follows, more or less. Uh, here we have pairs of disjoint simple closed curves. So, for instance, M1 and C1. So, for all such pairs, the corresponding twists commute. Uh, we obviously have this. Uh, relations. Whenever two of the, we have these two, uh, two G minus one curves, two G plus one curves. And whenever two of them are disjoint, we write down that they can be the corresponding dent with commute. Whenever two of curves have uh, intersect, they have a single point of intersections here in among these curves, all intersection numbers are either one or zero. If the intersection is one, we write down the braid relation and similarly for all pairs and plus three more relations. But these three relations are actually very cumbersome, uh, very, very nasty looking and uh, uh, I don't want to discuss them now. Okay. And actually, it, uh, uh, it also, I, I, I just would, would like to mention that it is more or less conceptual. Uh, it is uh, not hard and uh, uh, there is just, uh, from the action on some complex, it is it can be understood that the mapping class group is finitely present. But to understand that it is given by particularly particular pre uh, presentation, it uh, requires uh, a lot of technical work, and we we will not speak on this. Okay. Now we proceed with another topic uh, and it is called the, oh, sorry, the Dan Nielsen Bear theorem. I have formulated in the first lecture, but of course I don't, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I will uh, formulate it again now. So if we have a mapping the mapping class group, again, let us work with a closed surface. If we have the mapping class group of a closed surface, then this mapping class group acts on the fundamental group of the surface. Okay, it takes loops to loops and so it acts on the fundamental group but to be honest this is not true it would act on the fundamental group if it preserves the base point but we have no we have no uh, requirements like that when we have a closed surface hence in fact we have no good homomorphism to the, uh, if it acted on the fundamental group truly, we would have a homomorphism to the automorphism group of pi one. In, 
we have, in fact, we have only a homomorphism to the outer automorphism group of P1 of the surface, which is by definition the whole fundamental group, the quotient of the whole fundamental group by the inner fundamental group, or by the inner, the whole automorphism group by the inner automorphism group for the fundamental group. Uh, yes, how to see this action? Okay, if we have a mapping class, choose a base point. If we have a mapping class, we also, uh, we always uh, can represent this mapping class. F can be represented by a homeomorphism phi such that phi takes x0 to itself. Yeah, well, it is, it is uh, not difficult actually. Any homeomorphism take x0 to some point and then we can connect this by a path and we can easily deform uh, the homeomorphism so that it, uh, after, after this deformation, it takes x0 to itself. But this, de this deformation requires choice of this path. So, well, after we, after we choose this phi, then this phi obviously induce true automorphism of the fundamental group. Uh, so this phi star is automor an automorphism of the fundamental group. But if we have chosen instead of this, uh, instead of this path alpha, we choose an, another path to, 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 make, to create this homeomorphism. Then the corresponding, so instead of homeomorphism phi, we get another homeomorphism phi prime in the same mapping class. But uh, again, it takes x0 to x0, but it is easy to see that the, these two automorphisms differ by the inner automorphism corresponding uh, by the inner automorphism corresponding to this particular. Uh, okay, okay, we have this particular uh, if we take path from this uh, image to x zero, then we have this particular. Um, in our automorphism by, sorry. I must, uh, it is alpha like that along this loop. So choosing phi's in different way, we arrive to automorphisms that differ by the by inner automorphisms, so this arrow is well defined. When we take quotient by inner automorphisms, the corresponding automorphism, outer automorphism, is well defined. Okay, so we have this uh, this homomorphism, and a wonderful theorem due to. Mm. Dan Nielsen, this is this is called Dan Dan Nielsen Baird theorem. Uh, is that this is almost a, an isomorphism? Namely, first of all, this homomorphism is injective, and second, it is index two. It has the corresponding subgroup has index two here in outer automorphisms. Uh, and it is better to formulate this 
to formulate the theorem in slightly different way, uh, then it, it becomes more clear, clear when why here we have index two. Namely, instead of when we defined uh, the mapping class group, we took orientation preserving homeomorphisms of the surface and take uh, the quotient by the connected components of the identity. But the same homeomorphism would exist for orientation reversing ho uh, homeomorphisms as well. So it is more reasonable in this situation to define such group mapping class group plus minus as the quotient by all homeomorphisms, not necessarily orientation preserving of SG, modular by the identity group, uh, by the compo connected component of the identity. So here, the usual mapping class group is subgroup of index two. And then it is better to formulate theorem by then Bern, by, uh, Dan Nielsen Bar theorem that if we took such mapping class group, extended mapping class group, then the corresponding homomorphism action uh, by outer automorphism, oh, sorry, sorry, I mean by one here action by auto outer automorphisms of the fundamental group, it is just an isomorphism. And then, uh, well, this original theorem follows from that, this immediately. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so our goal is to prove this and yeah, well, uh, I must write here that it is true, uh, provided that G is greater or equal to one. Uh, frankly speaking, for G equals zero, it is not true, since such extended mapping class group is actually cyclic, the cyclic group of order two. There are two homeomorphisms of the sphere onto itself, irradiation uh, preserving and irradiation reserving, uh, reversing. Uh, up to, up to uh, isotopy, there are two of them, but uh, on the right-hand side, we have a trivial group. So, so it is not true. And we need to require that G is at least one. Another important remark is that this theorem is by no means true for surfaces with boundaries, for surfaces with punctures or boundary components. So this is just the very nice fact which works for surfaces for closed surfaces only. For surfaces with boundary components or punctures, we can consider the same automorphism as well. And actually the group on the right will become easier. The matter is that for a closed surface, the fundamental group, uh, well, it has two, two G generators and one relation usual product of commutators, but when we have at least one puncture or at least one boundary component, then of course here we have an easier group. We have just the group of outer automorphism or free group. However, this is not an isomorphism anymore. And we still can understand this group inside that one, but it is not so easy. Okay, now there are several possibilities to prove this theorem. Uh, I will tell you those which is uh, more or less in the spirit of methods we have used before. So 
mostly it relies on some applications and modifications of Alexander's method. And to start, let us note that the main observation here, so I, I, I can write proof, but before proving this particular theorem, we will speak on several general topics. Gen generic observation is that the universal cover covering of SG is contractible. Namely, it is homeomorphic. Sorry. Homeomorphic to R2. Actually, for I recall that we can do it by introducing flat metric when G equals one and or hyperbolic metric when G is at least two. And uh, then uh, we get either the Euclidean plane or the Lobachevsky plane as the fundamental, as the universal cover. And hence, hence, using long exact sequence for this covering uh, in homotopy groups, we see that SG is the Eilenberg maclean space for its fundamental group. I recall that this means X is a KJ1 space if and only if uh, the fundamental group, of course, X is linearly, uh, as X is pathwise connected uh, and uh, the fundamental group is isomorphic to G and high homotopy groups are trivial. So this SG is, um, it, it, SG itself uh, has trivial high homotopy groups. Since the high homotopy groups do not change when we pass to covering. Uh, so they are the same for SG and for its universal covering, which is topologically R2. So they are trivial, so we have uh, this claim. And why this is important? The matter is that for Eilenberg Maclean spaces, we have the following easy claim that consider two groups, G and H, just any groups. Uh, I again mean discrete groups, so groups without topology. Then we can consider the spaces the corresponding Eilenberg Maclean spaces, KG1 and KH1. Then we can take homotopy classes. Uh, let us assume that uh, we have these in both of these Eilenberg Maclean spaces, uh, base points are chosen. And we have, uh, we take. Uh, ba uh, base. Uh, point preserving homotopy classes. So we take maps from KG1 to KH1 that take base point to the base point, and we consider their homotopies so that this property is preserved through the whole homotopy. Now, so, my claim is that this set is in one-to-one -one correspondence with homomorphism from G to H. This is this fundamental observation is it is not hard to prove it. Namely, well, uh, well, we obviously have a natural map from here to here. Once uh, we have 
a map that takes base point here to the base point here, uh, then this map induces uh, uh, a map in of fundamental a homomorphism of fundamental groups. So we usually we obviously have this arrow. Why this is an automorphism, an isomorphism? Why why this is a bijection? Uh, let it be phi capital. Yes. Well, so first, why phi is surjective? Uh, suppose that we have a homomorphism, a homomorphism, say, phi small from G to H. Uh, then consider these spaces. This KJ1 and KH1, well, the, we can assume that these are CW complexes with a single, with one uh, zero dimensional uh, with one zero, with one vertex, uh, which is our base point. Up to homotopy, any KG, G, G1 uh, can be up to weak homotopy. Uh, equivalence it can be replaced by uh, CW complex. So we have CW complex here and CW complex. Uh, actually, actually let, let, let us from the very beginning assume that these are CW complexes. Uh, I don't want to uh, discuss uh, uh, Eilenberg maclean spaces, which are not CW complexes. So we have, look, once we have a homomorphism on fundamental groups, we can take the fundamental group of this space. The fundamental group is given its generators are one-dimensional cells and its relations are two-dimensional cells. So we just define the required, I would like to construct the map which yields the required homomorphism and fundamental group. Well, okay, we took zero-dimensional uh, cell to, to the zero-dimensional cell. Now we take any one-dimensional cell it corresponds to an element of G. We apply the homomorphism, we obtain element of H, and we map our cell to the corresponding sequence of cells here. So first we define our map on one scale on the one skeleton of KG1. Now we extend it uh, by dimension to two skeleton, three skeleton, and so on. When we try to extend it to a two skeleton, we notice that any, that two cells here corresponded to relations in G. Uh, once it corresponds to relation in G, then its boundary is mapped here to a trivial class. So, here we have a trivial loop and it can be ex extended uh, we if uh, a circle is mapped to a trivial loop here then we can extend this mapping to the disk with this boundary okay so in this way we can extend the mapping to two skeleton but now, starting from three skeleton, there are no uh, uh, no obst obstructions, no obstacles to uh, to extensions at all. Namely, when we consider here some three dimensional uh, three three cell, then it is attached to some two spheroid here. 
But two spheroids, since both spaces are k pi one, two spheroid comes here to a trivial spheroid. Hence, we always can extend the mapping of these two spheroid to the three cell, since it is homotopically trivial. Then we extend to four cells and so on. So we have extended this. And we are able to construct homotopy, a, a map which induces the required homomorphism. So this phi capital is surjective. Uh, let us uh, leave as an exercise that phi is injective. In fact, we need to do the same. Uh, we need to make the same argument, but in uh, in its relative form. So instead of uh, instead of uh, extending map, we need to extend homotopy. So we would like if we have two maps here. The, 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 this one is kg1, and this is uh, just a segment. If we have two maps to kh1, which uh, this is map f1, and this is map f2, and we know that f1 and f2 induce the same homomorphism in the fundamental group, then we can extend by skelet skeletons uh, starting from one skeleton, two skeleton, and so on, this to the whole homotopy. And uh, the, the reasoning is very similar. So we get this fact. What does this fact yield for us? So, I would like to discuss several corollaries of this fact. So corollary one. Suppose that a map of two eilenberg maclean spaces, KG1 and KH1, induces, now I would like this map without, uh, I don't want this map to, uh, to preserve, not necessarily preserving base, base, the base point, preserving the base point. If this map induces, so in this corollary, we have no base points at all from uh, initially. If it induces a bijection on P1, pi one, then F is a homotopy equivalence. Well, we do not have when, when, when we do not have any uh, uh, base points, uh, how can we speak about bijection by one? Well, we mean that for, for one and then for any point X in KG1, uh, this F induces a bijection from the fundamental group of KG1 with respect to point X to the fundamental group to kh1 with respect to the fundamental point uh, to, to the point f of x so we have no originally we have no uh, based point but we introduce it so we we introduce it and uh, if this is a bijection and and hence an isomorphism then f is a homotopy equivalence why Okay, we have introduced this base point and now we can use this assertion. Mm. Then we see that we can easily construct a homotopy 
inverse map, namely, mm, we see that, uh, okay, w once this map initial phi uh, induces an isomorphism in the fundamental group, we can take the inverse isomorphism. And then by this claim, there is a map taken f of x to x and uh, inducing this homomorphism in the fundamental group. And then they are actually, these two maps are actually homotopy inverse to each other uh, since their compositions are maps of kj1 to itself and of kh1 to itself which induce trivial maps on the fundamental group and, and again applying this assertion we see that if h equals j and the homomorphism is trivial then uh, the the corresponding uh, map is homotopically uh, is homotopic to the identity. Okay, uh, and corollary two, corollary two, is that if we have again forget for a moment from uh, about. Uh, base points, if we have two maps of an island back maclean space to itself, and if uh, well, if these are maps without any uh, and we do not think about base points, then we cannot say about automorphisms of F and uh, on of the fundamental group induced by these elements. But we can say about outer automorphism. So if these two maps induce the same outer automorphism, of G, which is the fundamental group of KJ1, then F is homotopic to G. Uh, again, we do not speak about uh, base point, so homotopic without preserving base point. Why this follows from, from, from this claim? Okay, let us let us choose a base point. And then by uh, replacing replacing F and G with homotopy equivalent maps with, with homotopic maps, we may achieve that F and G preserve this point. Then, then we can speak on true honest automorphisms of the fundamental group f star and g star of this fundamental group to itself but they are not necessarily equal but we know that uh, we know that f star and g star equal 
each other modular inner automorphism group uh, of pi one of G. Hence, we know, we see that um, F star equals G star composition with conjugation by some element gamma of G. Well, now we can represent this element gamma by a loop and consider a homotopy which takes the base point and make it go along this gamma. And then any such homotopy can be extended to the whole homotopy of, this is usual, usual homotopy extending properties for cell complex. So changing F by such homotopy, we can change F star by by an inner homomorphism, so we can achieve that F star actually equals G star. And after that, we see that the corresponding maps are homotopic, preserving the base point. But this additional homotopy doesn't preserve this additional homotopy when we go around. Gamma doesn't preserve the base point. So totally we have that F homotopic to G, but the homotopy, uh, the, the total homotopy doesn't preserve the base point, but it is exactly what we need. Okay, so look, we have these corollaries that first of all, if a map induces an a bijection of pi one and automorphism of on pi one, then it has a homotopy equivalence. Second, if two maps induce the same outer homomorphism, then they are homotopic. And actually, we also see that any homomorphism, any automorphism, or hence any any automorphism can be represented by a, uh, any isomorphism of fundamental groups can be represented by a map. So, in fact, from these facts, from these facts, it follows easily that if we consider, if we return to our surfaces and we consider homotopy, not homeomorphism, but homotopy equivalences of the surface onto itself, Surface is the surface is K, KG1 for G, its fundamental group. So we may apply all this technique and we understand that homotopy, if we take homotopy equivalences from SG to itself, let it, let it be phi beta, and we take the modular homotopy. So we identify who. Uh, homotopic homotopy equivalences. Then we also have this map into auto, to outer automorphism of pi one. And this one is isomorphism. We, uh, this, this is purely, this is true actually for any KJ1 space. So, but now, <clears throat> We have homeomorphisms of SG, modular, not homotopy by isotopy. We identify homeomorphism if there is a homotopy between them so that our homeomorphism remains homeomorphism during the whole homotopy. And uh, this is called isotopy. So we have a map here. We any homeomorphism is a homotopy equivalence, but not any homotopy equivalence is a homeomorphism. And isotopy is a more restrictive requirement than homotopy. So this is exactly our 
mapping class group. So we need to prove the only thing we need to prove is that this one is isomorphism. And to prove this, we need to prove, so, so, so the, the, this is already proved. And this one, this one we need to prove. And the first one, the, the, this one holds true for any KG1 space for surfaces with punctures, with boundaries and so on. Uh, just whenever the Euler characteristic is non-positive, the, uh, the surface is uh, KG1 for its fundamental group. So this is always true, but this one is more delicate and uh, this one is true only for closed surface. And actually we need to prove two things. Well, to prove this, we need to prove two things. Uh, we need to prove. First, we need to prove that any homo that we need to prove that this is a surjection and this is an inject injection. So we need to prove that any homotopy equivalence from SG to itself is homotopic to a homeomorphism. And the second thing we need to prove is that injectiveness, that if two homeomorphism are homotopic to each other as maps, then they are isotopic. Uh, and of course, as, as usual, we need to prove and uh, both these guys are groups. So we need to prove this only for homeomorphism homotopic to the identity. So if F is a homeomorphism, homotopic to the identity homeomorphism. Then F is isotopic to the identity. Uh, in other words, this means that the class of F in the mapping class group is trivial. Well, so we need to, to prove the uh, Dan nielsen bayer theorem. We need to prove these two assertions. And the second one is very standard and rather easy. And let us start with it. Namely, we can proceed by Alexander's method. We can consider our surface and we can choose the following set of simple closed curves. Since once we know that these curves fill the surface are, oh, and it is better to, um, it is better it is better to add such curve to break a symmetry, for instance. Uh, we can, if we want, we can add this one, this is, this doesn't matter. But okay, we can, we can choose some, uh, for instance, this particular set of curves. Then suppose that we have a homeomorphism 
which is homotopic to the identity homeomorphism. Once it is homotopic to the identity, we know that for any simple closed curve, it takes this, so F homotopic to the identity. Hence, for any simple closed curve, essential simple closed curve, gamma, F of gamma is homotopic and hence isotopic. We, we have proved this that for curves, homotopy and isotopy is a hence isotopic to gamma. And so uh, now we know that the mapping class by Alexander's method Uh, F, the mapping class group can be represented by a homeomorphism that stabilizes this graph gamma pointwise. The gamma is the union on, of all curves point-wise and then it follows easily that okay okay uh, using standard fact that the mapping of the disk to itself uh, fixed and boundary point-wise is isotopic to the uh, a homeomorphism of a disk on, onto itself which is which fix uh, the boundary point-wise is isotopic to the identity so we see that uh, this mapping class group, uh, this mapping class is trivial. So this is uh, concerning the, the second assertion. And now we need to prove the first assertion. Uh, and let us do it. So the proof of the first assertion. Uh, uh, the only difficulty here is that we have not uh, yet developed any technique to deal with uh, to deal with uh, with maps which are not homeomorphisms through the whole lecture course, we always deal with maps of surface to itself, which are homeomorphism or diffeomorphism. And actually, it is better to prove this, to prove this in smooth category. It is, of course, this, this claim uh, follows from the corresponding smooth claim. That, so I will prove that any homotopy equivalence is homotopic to a diffeomorphism, hence to a homeomorphism. So I, I, I would like to have a diffeomorphism here. Well, and the first step is as usually, well, the first, no, the first step is not as usually. The first step is that we would like to choose a pan's decomposition. For instance, this particular one, but actually any pan's decomposition, I recall that pair of pan's is uh, the surface uh, of genus zero with three boundary components. Uh, so choose, a pan's decomposition. Let us denote it by P. And now, if we have a homotopy equivalence, just any map, but uh, further we uh, uh, use that it is a homotopy equivalence. If we have 
any map, then we buy a homotopy. Uh, it is standard thing that we can approximate any continuous map first by smooth map, and then by a uh, by a smooth map transversal to any chosen submanifold. So we may by homotopy by homotopy. we may achieve that this F is smooth and transversal to this submanifold P. Now, this means that F inverse of P is a submanifold, a smooth submanifold, well, of course, one dimensional submanifold in SG. So we see the following situation. Sorry, I would like to. We see the following situation. We have our surface, it is mapped to itself. Here we have the chosen points decomposition. Uh, and here we have some curves obtained as some smooth curves obtained as uh, pre images of this the decomposition. So we can have more components here than here. Uh, but look on any component. So suppose that we have here gamma is one of the components of our pants decomposition, and we took let delta be a component of the pre image of gamma. Well, what, how does, how can this delta looks? Look, if we restrict our mapping, note that our mapping is not a homeomorphism, not a diffeomorphism, just a smooth map. If we restrict our mapping to delta, then it is a mapping of delta to gamma. So it is a mapping from circle to a circle. Uh, up to homotopy, what are the possibilities for, for mappings, from maps from circle to circle? Well, okay. There are, there, there, there are three possibilities. It may be, homotopy trivial. So the, the, the fundamental group of circle is Z. So this one may be homotopy trivial. It may be mm, homotopic to, uh, to a homeomorphism. No, well, to a diffeomorphism. So it is possible that uh, this has degree equals to plus or minus one. So it uh, wounds, uh, it, it goes once along this, uh, along this gamma. This delta goes once along this gamma. Then it is homotopic to a diffeomorphism. Or it is possible that it goes several times Alone, gamma. But now, now, recall that this F is a homotopy equivalence. What does it mean? This means that it takes delta to a homotopic. This path delta is mapped 
to a homotopic path here. So in the first case, in the first case, if this delta is mapped to gamma so that it is homotopically trivial, then delta is necessarily homotopically trivial here. So in the first case, first case is possible, but then delta is inessential. So it bounds a disk. Second case is also possible. Second case is also possible since then, but in this case, we see that delta is homotopic to gamma. I recall that this is the same surface. So F is, hom is uh, mm, homotopic to the identity. So it takes any curve to a homot homotopic to it. Uh, homotopy without base point. So it's free, free homotopy. Delta is homotopic to gamma, and hence delta is isotopic to gamma. Okay, and what is about this third possibility? If this delta goes several times around gamma, then, well, okay, once we have no uh, base point, then the homotopy class of a curve is not an element of the fundamental group, but is a conjugacy class in the fundamental group. But as a conjugacy class, it is well defined. But in this case, we see that the homotopy class, class of delta is not primitive. It, it can be divided by, if it goes several times along gamma, it can be divided by the number of times, how, how many times it goes around gamma. And this one is impossible. Since we have proved uh, rather far ago that the homotopy class of any simple closed curve is primitive. So this third, case is impossible. The first two cases are possible. And now look, suppose that now look on all uh, pre-images of all, uh, look on all this situation, on all pre-images of all curves in the Pan's decomposition. Mm. If we have at least one inessential curve, if there is an inessential curve, then it bounds a disk. It is a pre image. We can take uh, the innermost such curve and innermost such curve. And then this delta is mapped to gamma, but it, uh, it is mapped homotopically trivial. And, uh, and now it is easy to homotop F so that to remove this component delta. So if it is homotopy trivial, then, uh, then uh, look, mm, if we take here a slightly bigger curve, then it is mapped on the one side of delta and it is not easy to change, uh, to change F here so that, uh, in fact, we use this map F, uh, 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 restricted to this disk delta 
uh, it provides homotopy, uh, we can achieve that all the disk is mapped to gamma and then we can slightly move so that it, it makes on the one side of gamma. So we may just delete these curves, such curves and and now well i am out of time and maybe it is not good if i hurry up so uh, let, uh, let us continue this uh, finish this next time uh, actually the, there are just 10 or maybe minutes to finish this next time i hope still i would like to speak at least something, uh, to tell us at least something on trivial in the course, I would uh, try uh, to give at least sketch of the proof of why this connected component of the diffeomorphism of the surface is contractible. G greater than equal to two. Maybe I will not give a precise proof, but at least some sketch of it. Uh, this is a result by Eels and Earl. Uh, vice, vice versa, it is difficult to understand the alphabetical order for, for such surnames. Uh, okay, so next time will be devoted mostly to this uh, uh, result, but in the beginning, I will finish the proof of the Dan Nielsen Bear theorem. And now I think it's time to finish. If you have any questions, I want to say once more that I will send uh, exam problems during this weekend for sure. If you have any problems, it's okay. Uh, um, записки или они где-то есть? А, обязательно пошлю, да, да, да. Спасибо. А, а так у нас еще будет в следующий раз занятие и все, так что. Да, да, в следующий раз будет будет лекция и и все. Ну, да, дальше уже совсем новый год. Вот. Что? Понятно. Спасибо. А задача